Hey guys, Video Game Viewer here with a super special episode that I'm super excited about. We have Ken Burton here. I went out on a limb, decided to message him, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, he messaged me back. What do you know? So, we got him here. We're going to ask him a few questions. So, uh, I'm not going to keep rambling on. We're going to dive right into this. So, uh, hey, Ken, how you doing? We're, gonna, we're just going to kick this right off and go right into the questions. Okay. Uh, you're a machinima director. Uh, I, I really want to know, what got you started doing this and how long have you been doing it? Do you know, that, that's a really interesting one because when you, when you kind of go back to my very first video, uh, it was in November, December time, 2009. Now, at the time, I'd been kind of, you know, 14-year-old son, been playing video games with him. And I thought I was okay, actually. I thought I was okay at uh, World at War. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm pretty okay at World at War, I'm not that bad. And then Modern Warfare 2 came out, and I was shit, absolutely shit. And I couldn't understand why. Well, looking at it now, and hindsight is a wonderful thing, but I wasn't that good at World of War. <laughs> I just had this thing in my own head that I was. So, you know, looking at it, you know, and I was like, well, why? Why is that? So um, I was asking my son, who is enormously better than I am at video games and uh, he couldn't work it out and I couldn't work it out so I put it on YouTube and said guys go and have a look at this and tell me why I'm shit <laughs> and uh, it wasn't long I, I did I got loads of good comments loads of good answers from that so what I did was I put up two or three videos and said okay I'll do this I'll do what you're suggesting is this improving what do you think am I doing this okay next thing I know um, I get a call from Machinima. Hello, would you like to be a Machinima director? And I'm like, yes, of course I would. Thanks very much. So, um, what got you started? That's what got me started, really, being absolutely appalled at how shit I was <laughs> at Modern Warfare 2. That's super interesting. You know, you can always count on, uh, on YouTube, no matter what you throw up on YouTube. Uh, the community on there is always going to be totally and brutally honest with you. And uh, YouTube really is a great tool to get noticed, so that's uh, that's really interesting. Uh, moving on to our next question, you're mostly known for your Call of Duty videos, but um, I want to know, and I'm sure other people do, what are some of your other favorite games that, uh, that you like to play uh, other than Call of Duty? Ooh, interesting one. Now, favorite games has to be going back to some of the early days of gaming when we were playing things like, for instance, uh, Voyager. Um, the Star Trek Voyager game, I forget, Elite Force, that's the name of it. Now, when Elite Force first came out, I mean, I, I was playing games before that, obviously. I was doing the, you know, Mario and uh, Wonder Boy and all these sort of games, and Galaxicon and Alien and Invaders. But um, I t when Elite Force came out, it was the first time I'd ever played an online game, and it was magical. In fact, it inspired me to build a special room in my house where I could just put my gaming PC, and uh, and it was on PC in those days, and just go sit, play games without being disturbed by anybody. And I played it for hours, days, weeks, and months. I never got off that thing. I missed work because of that thing. So I reckon Elite Force was one of the best games I ever played because it, it just totally engulfed me and then um i guess uh another game that i played was um battlefield 2 not battlefield bad company 2 battlefield 2 uh which was again on the pc and it was a fantastic game because i could co-op that with my son and we could just the two of us get in a large map we could dog fight we could helicopter fight we could oh we were just absolutely in awe of the game so the cod series is fantastic and it's great and you can't take that away from it and i'm mostly known for the call of duty videos because that is basically what people want to see and if people want to see it that's what you've got to give them it's supply and demand it's as simple as that but those are a couple of my favorite games yeah we all have our favorite games um I, I, for one, I know I missed my fair share of days of uh, school back when I was in school to take off for uh, every time a new Grand Theft Auto title would come out, I'd have to get my uh, <laughs> my, my violence yeah. on playing Grand Theft Auto and had to miss school every time a new one of those came out. 
uh, in your videos, uh, you're you're extremely funny and have a very, I think, a unique style of commentating. Did you always have this style, or was it something you you had to work on? Uh, that is a fantastic question. Um, let me, <laughs> let me answer that by saying there there is a certain level of presentational style that comes across, which is slightly different to, um, I would have said, the vast majority of people who are out there and commentating. That kind of stems from the fact that in my world, before, of course, getting into gaming, in my world, I was doing presentations in front of sometimes 30 people, sometimes 100 people. I was doing training sessions. I would do uh, seminars where I would get up and talk to an audience. And now the first time I ever did that, I think I was probably in my 30s. And I got up and I did a PowerPoint presentation and the whole world just fell asleep, you know. And this is our uh, figures for November's uh, third quarter of 87. You know, and you just think, oh, my God. And every time I watch somebody else do a presentation, they did it like that. So I thought, fuck it, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. And I don't care. Now, when I first started using this style, when I first started getting a little bit more flamboyant, it made people sit up. It made people take notice. And especially when I got interactive with these guys, which was the best part of doing any training session or, you know, any sort of seminar. And when you say something along the lines of, uh, and you, you could surprise people by asking them questions. Nobody in the audience expects that you're going to ask them a question when you're in a seminar. So you sit there, or you stand there at the podium, you say, right, okay. And what do you think we did for September? And then you look at person in the audience, you go, Brian. <laughs> and everybody sort of goes, fucking hell, he's just asked Brian a question. Jesus, has he? And Brian's sitting there red-faced, and Brian goes, um, 30 million? And you go, bing, bong, thank you for playing, wrong. Um, <laughs> it's that flamboyant style that I brought into what I do as a commentator. And it was from my world of presentations from my world of project management into uh, gaming and injecting as many funnies as you can into there because really laugh and you know the world's going to laugh with you if you monotone then you're on your own basically that's uh, that's my take on it okay did you always have this style so no I didn't always have the style I did have to work on it but not for gaming I worked on it for my professional role as a project manager and brought it into game. That's awesome, man. That that's whatever you're doing, it, it works. Uh, judging obviously from your your fan following, I know I love your videos. So just keep it up because your commentating is just awesome. I I love it, and I know a lot of other people do too. Um, when you're not when you're not playing games, uh, what is a typical day in the life of Mr. Ken Burton? Okay, we can answer that one really, really easily because my typical day has been documented in a vlog that I did and put up on my own channel. It's a series of three and it's called Day in the Life and it starts off at three o'clock in the morning when I have a, a hypo uh, because I'm type 1 diabetic and it goes on until and it covers about nine o'clock at night when I did my final bit of work which was a, uh, that was a, um, uh, what we call Wolfcast. It's effectively a podcast that we did with a few friends so that if you want to know what a typical day is in the life of and believe me those three videos do cover a typical day um because i work seven days a week i i work long hours i make sure that i put as much into this role as i always have in everything that i've ever done i put as much into this role as i possibly can and i think the more that you put in the more you can take out so a typical day go and watch those three videos Okay, okay. I've actually uh, watched those videos. Um, they're really good. Um, for anybody that's watching this that hasn't seen those, I'm going to be putting a link down at the bottom to those as well. So you can go and check those out and uh, check out what a day in the life of uh, Ken Burton is like. Uh, so the link will be down at the bottom. When you play Call of Duty, Ken, uh, I notice you use a lot of different class layouts, but if you had to choose... Which which class would be your favorite? Okay, classes are an enigma, 
They really are. I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I know that I can use the ACR with a red dot and it kind of works for me. So I always have that. I like uh, shotguns as secondaries <laughs> um, because I'm shit with everything else. And um, that that probably is. I like to run fast. So Marathon Pro is always a good one. <laughs> Anything that's going to get me out of the way of people. Um, sleight of hand pro because I can't aim as quickly as some of the kids I'm, I'm playing against. Anything really that a aids an aging gamer is what I play with. <laughs> but I'm always open to uh, trying out new classes. I mean, like today, for instance, I was out there with the F2000 on Modern Warfare 2. Uh, made a complete hash of it. <sighs> completely rubbish, but I tried it anyway. So there you go. My favorite class layout would be any one that works for me on the day. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm the same way. I can I can never stick to the to the same class. I I'm always switching up, trying different things. What works for me one day uh, may not work for me the next. And as far as shotguns go, I'm always rolling with that AA12. Um, so I always have a shotgun attached to me as well. All right, now for the tough question. There are two huge games coming out very soon, as I'm sure you know. Battlefield 3 and Modern Warfare 3. I'm not going to ask which one you think is better, because I'm sure we're going to play both of them, uh, the, the crap out of both of them, but which one is catching your eye more, and, and why? Another bloody good question. Uh, this one, uh, it is a toughie. It really is a toughie, because... Having been to Gamescom, I've seen Battlefield 3 and I've played Modern Warfare 3. So, you know, and I've played Modern Warfare 3 with the illustrious Tabe, no less. So, you know, it is a difficult one to answer. When I, they are, I think in my head, they are, they are completely two different games. I think Battlefield 3 will have some incredibly exciting moments in that. Uh, you can have 30 people on the ground and 30 people in the air. You know, Now, that as a concept is amazing. I don't know how they've done that as far as maps go, but that to me is just amazing. I, I really want to get that game. I like driving vehicles. I like flying helicopters. I like flying planes. I enjoy the whole battle scenario from every aspect and not just being the guy on the ground. So I am quite psyched for Battlefield 3, but... Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to buy that on PC because I want to do something for the PC gamers. You know, I want to do some videos for them. And uh, at the moment, a lot of us directors, anyway, we ignore them, and that's not right. So I vowed to these guys that I would get Battlefield 3 on PC. So that's what I'm going to do. And Battlefield 3, I think, is going to be a strategic game. It's going to be a you know a very sort of white knuckle ride if you like whereas modern warfare 3 the more i see it the more i am oh my god th this game is just going to be exceptional having played it it was exceptional having now uh seen the keynote from the uh cod xp 2011 in la uh which i watched tonight on a stream I am even more psyched for it. There are things that are going to be happening within uh, within Modern Warfare 3 that I've never seen before, never experienced before. I want to go and experience that. I want to see that. Uh, there are new weapons. There are new toys. There are new loadouts. There are um, different styles of fighting. The kill streaks is different. Everything, everything about uh, that's good about COD 4 and World at War and Everything else that you've seen COD related seems to have been stripped out and put into uh, Modern Warfare 3. And that, to me, is going to make it one hell of a game. I really don't know. On the day, when it comes to it, when I've got both of them sitting in front of me, one on the PC, one in the Xbox, which one am I going to grab? I don't know. On a daily basis, I really don't know. I'm going to try to divide my time between the two. But... Let's just see how that goes. So at the moment, it's a toss-up between the two. I am absolutely psyched, stoked, and champing at the bit for both of those games, without a doubt. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm super stoked for those games as well. I can't wait for them to come out. Um, I, I, I'm going to like them both equally, I think. I, they're both going to have their, 
they're they're good and they're bad. And uh, I'm sure we'll have no shortage of flaws in the comments section below uh, of people telling me which one they're they're waiting for to come out more um, with the whole fanboy war between COD and Battlefield. But but all right, uh, okay, Ken. Uh, one more quick question before we have to go. I'm sure every one of us is wondering. Just what is it like to be a machinima director? And do you have any advice for someone who wants to be a director? I mean, it must be it must be awesome to get paid and, and be a director. And, and I'm sure we're all wondering what, what that's like. Okay, it, it is very simple. A very clever guy once told me that you need three things to be a successful video maker. Okay, one is production. So your video needs to be in HD. The production needs to be good. Your editing needs to be good. The second thing is your commentary. You have to have something about your commentary that no one else has got. And people will say, well, hold on a minute, that's impossible, isn't it? No, it's not, because it's you and you're unique. And no matter how many times you try, you will never be someone else. So be yourself. Don't try and be uh, taped. Don't try and be seen as. Don't try and sound like Hutch. You're never going to do it. Be you. Try and avoid being monotone as well in your commentaries. Animate what you're talking about. That's a really big thing. And the third one is gameplay. Gameplay as in if you've got fantastic gameplay, if you do 50 to ones every time you pick up a COD disc, or, you know, like me, if you do particularly badly and then, you know, use that to complement your commentary. Now, that very clever person said to me, you can have all three and you will really get somewhere as a machinima director. You can have two and get away with it. If you only have one of them, don't. So you're looking at production, you're looking at um, commentary and you're looking at gameplay. And those are the three things. And I think as a, as a budding YouTuber, if you're sat at home thinking, well, shit, I could do that. I could earn money all day from that. Um, take a little bit of a look at yourself and get some friends to take a look at you as well and get it critiqued and just say, look, uh, you know, these are the three things I'm aiming for here. What do you think I've got? What do you think I can improve? Do you think I can make it? Do you think I fit the bill in those three categories? And get somebody to tell you and give you an honest opinion about that. Uh, if you genuinely believe that you've got all three or you've got two of the three, then get your stuff on the Respawn Army app on Facebook and make sure it gets noticed. Twitter it, get your mates to tweet it, tweet the, uh, the big names, tweet Machinima Respawn, get them to have a look at it. Absolutely, you know, Go for it and uh, get as much out there as you can. If you only get 100 views on it, it doesn't matter because you only need one of those views to be somebody who's a decision maker at Machinima and you could have a contract. Remember that. Okay, so uh, that's my advice for anyone who wants to be a director. Good advice, good advice. Well, guys, as always, this has been the Video Game Viewer. And my name's been Ken Burton. And we hope you really enjoyed the show, guys. Don't forget to check out Ken's videos. Link will be in the description below. I love his commentary. He's super good. So please, please go check out his videos. And as always, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.